That rattle. That unmistakable rattle. To me, there is something magical about the sound of a hollow plastic body loaded with steel BBs, ripping it back to the boat at 30 miles an hour. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Today, we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite baits of all time, the lipless crankbait. Retro Bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Think about Bill Dance watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. The lipless crankbait that we all know and love today was not invented uh, in an instant, but rather through a series of different lures, lure companies, and random events. But if we could simplify the whole deal into two stages, it would be first, the profile in action, and second, that sound. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish at old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment, from the golden era of bass fishing. Stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. I think it's right there. Otherwise, you won't know when we post a new video like this one. Now, before we uh, dive into the history of the lipless crankbait and crack open my lipless crankbait tackle box, by the way, I've been doing a little bit of spring cleaning, and this thing is packed. I do want to give a special shout out to somebody that helped immensely with this video, but in addition has been an inspiration for Retro Bassin. I have been talking with Terry Battisti, who is the founder of Bass Fishing Archives. If you guys have not seen Bass Fishing Archives, I'm gonna drop a link down below. Um, it is one of the greatest pages on Facebook that I think you will ever find. Terry is an old school guy like me, and he focuses much more on the print ads and media of the golden era of bass fishing. For me, when I was first starting this channel way back when, Bass Fishing Archives was one of the first uh, things that I found and one of the few resources I could find on old school tackle. Honestly, if you can think of an old school bait, chances are uh, Terry has got a post over on Bass Fishing Archives. So Terry has recently revamped the Facebook page He's actually starting a website, he's getting on Instagram, and we are hoping to do some serious collaboration between Retro Bassin and Bass Fishing Archives in the very near future. The general profile for this bait can be traced back to 1933, when Corpus Christi resident Fred Nichols carved a cedar wood lure that resembled a saltwater piggy perch. The lure found its way from the saltwater marshes in the Gulf of Mexico to the lakes of Southern Texas, and the rest is history. Of course, I'm talking about this bait, the Pico Perch. There has been a little bit of debate about this particular style of lure and a few sort of claiming to be maybe the first one. So what we have here is the classic Pico Perch from Pico Lures, which by the way stands for Padre Island Company. And here is one in a nice Classic saltwater looking white and red. More of a traditional perch pattern. Here's one that tells you what everybody knows, which is, of course, that Texas treats you better. <laughs> Pico did a lot of really cool stuff with customized lures. And I don't know if this one is actually a Pico brand or not, but We'll assume it is. So the cool thing about the Pico Perch, and what's sort of interesting is, it is definitely a lipless crankbait. It almost has more of a sawed off uh, lip than the classic rattle traps and cordell spots, which we'll get to. But it does have that same lipless diving action. And this bait, just like the original Pico Perch, is silent. 
What I like about the Pico Perch, and I actually did a video on this, this thing fishes a lot higher and almost slower than a standard lipless crankbait. You can actually run this right over some weed beds and when you pause it, it almost suspends. Now I talked about some of the controversy that happened early on with this bait and there's another company out there that had a very similar lure right around the same era. And that is the Bayou Boogie from Whopper Stopper. This bait is still available today from Head and Lures, and this might be a more standard profile that most of you guys are used to seeing. But it's still got that sawed off lip, and this one has more of a one knocker rattle. I love this bait, and while I did not grow up fishing the Pico Perch very often, I definitely threw a ton of Bayou Boogies in my day. One other company that had a similar offering to the Pico Perch and the Bayou Boogie was this bait. It's called the Swimming Minnow. And that's sort of the interesting thing about these baits and kind of how you know there must have been a little bit of uh, probably controversy back in the day. You've got Pico, which was based in Corpus Christi, Texas. You've got Whopper Stopper based in Sherman, Texas. And then we had Tackle Industries based in Shreveport, Louisiana. So here is a new in the package Tackle Industries Swimming Minnow. And I will pop this open for you. So this all, when you have look at the profile of this bait, it does look similar to a Bayou Boogie. However, head on, you can see it's much thinner. And I'll hold the two of these guys side by side. And there's a Bayou Boogie next to the Swimming Minnow. We're gonna fast forward to 1957, when Head Lure Company took a step toward morphing that lipless crankbait into a more recognizable profile when they introduced this, the Head and Sonic. You can already see that this is starting to become a little bit more of a familiar shape to us. It's got a little bit more of a pointy nose and of course, the little dorsal fin, a la the rattle trap. Now, while this uh, particular Hedden Sonic does rattle, the original ones that were released by Hedden still did not rattle. And that was the deal with these lipless crankbaits when they first came out. It was about the action and the profile, but all of them were silent. A year later, in 1958, Cotton Cordell released the Hotspot. I don't have any original hotspots on me, but I do have some Cordell rattle spots. And I imagine the hotspot profile probably looked most similar to this bait. This was, again, a silent bait. However, there was one divine, beautiful little mistake that changed all that. The story goes, as I was talking to Terry over at Bass Fishing Archives, was that the ballast weight in one particular lot of the Cordo hotspots came loose. I think it was the glue in there wasn't holding up and all of a sudden that weight that was supposed to be in place rattled, kind of like a one knocker. Bass fishermen scoured the shells for these quote, faulty baits. And next thing you know, everybody was trying to get their hands on a rattling spot. Of course, Cotton Cordell being the observant lure designer that he was quickly incorporated rattles into all of the spots. So shortly thereafter, a World War II B-24 bomber pilot by the name of William Lewis would put his own stamp on lipless crankbait history. After the war, William, or Bill as he was better known, started his own one-man lure company out of his kitchen in Jackson, Mississippi. Later moving the business to Alexandria, Louisiana, Bill Lewis began selling spinnerbaits and soft plastics out of the back of his old Ford, which he'd affectionately named the rattle trap. Seeing the demand for rattling baits like the Cordell Spot, Bill thought to himself, these guys want a noise making bait, I'm gonna blow the roof off. Bill incorporated steel BBs in his lipless crankbait and the rattle trap was born. As you can tell by my display here, I'm a bit of a lipless crankbait junkie. And before we dive into this tackle box, I do wanna tell you a little bit about my history with the bait. So this is the first rattle trap, the actual first one that I ever owned. 
This was a Bill Lewis half ounce rattle trap in a tequila sunrise color. And one thing you'll immediately notice about this bait, and this particular bait, is that it's pretty clean. I first bought this bait, I was hooked on this in probably a you know, 1992 Bass Pro Shops catalog, but I never really fished it. I wasn't super confident with this bait, and so it sat in my tackle box for a number of years. Of course, I had success with some other baits like the Bayou Boogie, but the rattle trap itself was something that kind of, I don't know, almost intimidated me. It wasn't until a number of years later, while I was fishing the tidal Potomac River, that I really discovered my love for lipless crankbaits with this bait, the Lucky Craft LVR D7. This really was one of the greatest baits for fishing in those shallow grass flats of the Tidal River in one of the most money colors that you could find. This was really the lure that got me re-engaged with lipless crankbaits, and after that, forget about it. So back to fishing um, some other bodies of water. I loved casting for striped bass in the Severn and Magothy rivers with that half ounce rattle trap. And after I figured out I could catch fish and how to catch fish on that bait, man, I started throwing the rattle trap a ton. I'm also a big chain pickerel junkie. And one of the kind of baits that those fish love in tidal waters this time of year December, January, February is a suspending jerkbait. Well, this is a Cordell suspending spot that I picked up and whew, I used to smoke some pickerel on this guy. This is again one of my original baits that I do not fish anymore just for fear of losing it, but it is a bleeding shad color in that really cool G finish pattern that they don't make anymore. So before we tackle the tackle box, what else do I have here? Well, let's talk about Cordell Spots. I love Cotton Cordell. It's one of my favorite old school lure companies. Really the creativity that Cotton had in his baits, he was not afraid to take chances. And some of the designs, even when it comes to a pretty standard bait like the lipless crankbait, are kind of mind blowing. So here is a Cordell Super Spot which it says is the winner of the 1992 Bass Master Classic. So this is a three quarter ounce rattle spot. And listen to how loud this thing is. <sighs> Crazy. One of my favorite rattle spots is the neon spot. I am just a geek for that old school packaging and color pattern. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but the Pro Autograph series from Mr. Jimmy Houston. And this has two Cordell spots, one in a quarter ounce and the other in a half ounce. So these are both super spots, as you can clearly hear. I think that's one of the loudest ones out there, honestly, is that super spot. Uh, Cordell also had this one, which is pretty cool. This is called the Rattle Spot Minnow. It's a longer profile. Check that out with the same sound. And Cordo also came in a jointed spot, which I've never fished before, but I'm probably gonna pretty soon. You can imagine that thing probably looks pretty nasty in the water. Bill Lewis had their share of different varieties of rattle traps as well, and I've got a few of them here for you. This is a half ounce hot tails. I guess they just dipped the tail of the bait in some sort of different color. The electric shad. Oh, I love that pattern. I also love this old school plastic box that they don't sell anymore. The diving rattle trap, which probably behaves much more like a crankbait than a rattle trap. Here's a standard rattle trap in an old discontinued color. The glowing trap. And the pro trap. I'll open this up and show you. This one's pretty cool. One of the challenges with any crankbait, but especially a heavy crankbait, like a half ounce rattle trap, 
is when a fish gets it and jumps, they might throw that bait. So Bill Lewis counteracted that with this, which is called the Pro Trap. Here's how it works. It is a hookless bait with a channel in the middle through which you run the line and tie it to a hook. That way when a fish gets hooked, this can swing up and down the line and the fish can't throw the bait. And here's the illustration of how that works. I'm gonna clean up some of this stuff and show you guys what's inside. So by the way, here in Texas, it is crazy. I had grand plans to get on the water this week, get some of that pre-spawn bass in, but there's about a half inch of ice on like every bush outside. So I decided to instead spend my time doing a little spring cleaning with my lipless crankbaits. So this is an old school tackle box I've got. This is a Plano 6303. I'm trying to work on my tackle a little bit, trying to get it into some different boxes and um, I've got too much tackle. But <laughs> the vast majority of my lipless crankbaits are inside here. So let's check them out. Starting, um, where are we gonna start? Ah, let's start in the bottom, why not? There are some pretty cool baits that I've got here. Some of these are still in the package that I haven't fished yet, but I will at some point. This is called Ambush Lures Stealth Diver. This one's got a channel in it. I've never actually fished this one before. I don't know if I'm gonna open that one up or not, but that is kind of a funky, very blocky looking lipless crankbait. Does it rattle? And sort of a one knocker. Here is another uh, interesting lipless crankbait from Rabble Rouser. Uh, what is this called? The Ran Sacker. It's kind of got that weird Rabble Rouser lift to it. And does this thing rattle? Yep. Again, sort of a one knocker deal. Uh, Fred Arbogast had a couple of different pretty cool lipless crankbaits. This one is called the True Shad. This one has more of that standard, um, almost you could say piggy perch style profile. But that is a pretty good looking little bait. Here's one from Bass Pro Shops. The Laser Eye. Not super old school, but at this point I'm pretty sure this bait is discontinued. So I will include it in this video. Uh, I mentioned Cordell had some pretty wild baits. I don't even know the name of this one. This is a Cotton Cordell lipless crankbait under their Pro Lures series. This is sort of like their discount brand. And this thing doesn't rattle. Almost probably fishes a whole lot like a Head and Sonic. Pretty sweet. Oh, speaking of head and, so this is another one. This came out actually a year after the Sonic. This is the head and sonar. This one you might fish a little bit more like a jigging spoon. However, upon a straight retrieve, it absolutely acts a whole lot like a hotspot. And here's one from Bomber Lure Company in a pretty standard looking rattle spot profile. Ooh, we're in Texas, and this is a bait. I just picked up a few of these recently. I've never actually fished it, but I'm pretty excited to get on the water with it. It's from Storm Lure Company. It's called the Texas Shad. And I've got a couple of these that are out of the package. I will show you all in a second. But there's the package of that guy. Oh, another one from Bomber. This is the Bomber Pinfish. A little bit more of a saltwater offering but it's got that lipless crankbait profile and action for sure. Berkeley Power Baits. They had a really cool line back in the day. It was half hard bait, half power bait, soft plastic. And this is one of them. This is called, I think it's called the Power Rattle. So it's got a, a rattle trap head and a soft plastic body. And it's got sort of a high-pitched little BB in there. Culprit also got in on the action with this style bait. I don't know which one was first, 
but this one is called the Soft Cranker from Culprit. And again, it's got a half hard uh, nose, soft tail. And you can imagine this thing probably has a pretty sweet undulating action in the water. I told you, too many crankbaits, too little time. Oh, here's one of my favorite packages. This is from Rebel, it's called the Racket Shad. I've got some of these out of the package, I'll show you the profile, it's pretty wild. But, look at that art. Oh, I always feel bad opening these sometimes, I swear. And, does it make a racket? I'd say so. One of my all-time favorite lure designers, Mr. Tom Mann, also got in on the action with lipless crankbaits. Here is one from Fish World. Nothing too crazy here, just a standard hotspot profile with Mr. Tom Mann there. But there's a couple others that I've got, which you probably can anticipate. One of which is this bait, the man's Leroy Brown. This is 100% a lipless crankbait, and honestly a bait that I would fish more if they weren't so darn expensive. Like every time you lose one, it's like 50 bucks, so I don't throw them as much as I should. And, ah, uh, this is probably one of my favorite inventions of all time, the Tom Man Pogo Shad. These are new in the package, two different sizes. This is the half ounce, this is the quarter ounce. And like that Lucky Craft LVR D7, these baits are money on tidal grass flats. Oh, just a single hook, um, but what a really cool bait. I actually saw it was, a, I think Epic Eric did a, a live stream recently where he talked about sort of the action of this bait. And when you pause it, it slowly flutters down, almost like, um, I don't know what, uh, not like normal lipless crankbait, that's for sure. So I've got some of these out of the package, but I thought you guys would get a kick out of the old school <laughs> chief package there from Tom Mann. And what is this? Okay, here's another one from Whopper Stopper. What is this called? The Rippin' Rattler. Uh, this is a color selector model. And I think the deal is, it's kind of hard to see in the package, but there's a number of colored inserts. And depending on what that Dr. Lauren Hill color selector is telling you, you can choose a different insert for this under different conditions. I've just got one, so she ain't getting opened. Okay, now it's time to talk to the stuff that's out of the package, the stuff that I fish more often than, than the other stuff. So here is that Head and Sonic that we talked about. What a cool little lipless crankbait. This one does rattle, and I definitely throw these guys. One of the challenges I've got with these old baits, especially the ones that come from Hedden, is you notice there's no split ring on the hook. So I've gotta make a decision if I'm gonna cut off these hooks or try to, to sharpen them. I think in general, when there's no split ring, I'm gonna to try to leave the original hooks in place and do my best to sharpen them and not lose like too many fish. Here's one from, uh, I believe this is Lazy Ike. This might be called the Sail Shark, if I recall correctly. Sort of a head and sonic profile, but it's jointed. This is a bait, I actually caught this one on a snag. I think it came in, I, I snagged a bunch of fishing line, and this old school gem was at the end of it. One of our bass and buds actually turned me on to this company. This is called Good Broad. And this is a pretty wild bait. I have honestly never fished this and this just came in the mail. But it looks to me like a lipless crankbait. And I don't know if you can see the clear tail here. I've got a feeling that sucker fishes a whole lot like the Tom Man Pogo Shed. I've got it in this, which is probably a half ounce. I just broke it. And this is a quarter ounce. Let me see if this thing rattles. No. So this is a silent bait. It's got a really interesting location for the eye, that tail. Um, I've got a feeling this thing looks pretty nasty underwater. But these are both from, I think it's Good Broad is the company. Um, it's not a company that I'm super familiar with, but it's definitely an old school one that I was turned on to. Yep. 
And I don't know the name of this bait either. All right, Tom Man Pogo Shad. So here is uh, that half ounce Pogo Shad. Not too unstandard if you look at it from this angle, but that tail, oh! So upon a retrieve, that tail really wiggles back and forth, but when you pause it, it actually helicopters down in a really slow fashion. So if you've ever got dying shad, I can imagine this thing will be nasty in the fall. But summertime over uh, some grass flats, we're gonna get these things out there. Um, I've been meaning to fish with this more on camera. Most of my pogo shad fish just happens to be off camera and I probably need to change that. And there's the quarter ounce model of the same deal. But look at that tail, oh, that's awesome. Okay, so we talked about the Cordell rattle spot. Check out that little micro nugget there. That is a eighth ounce neon spot. Woo! <laughs> that would actually be really money on some of the little creeks we have around here. Let's see how it sounds. Tiny but mighty, huh? <laughs> and some Leroy Browns. So I said I don't fish for these too much. I, I still do. I'm just kind of safe about it. And if you're ever being safe with crankbaits, you're probably not fishing in the right spot. So that's probably why I don't catch more on these. But there is one in sort of a, almost a copper bass color of the Leroy Brown. More of a traditional natural pattern. And check out this chartreuse Leroy Brown. Uh, which, of course, was uh, named and designed after Tom Mann's pet bass, Leroy Brown. All right, we're on to row number two here. So, okay, here are a couple of those Storm Texas shads I talked about. This is actually a really cool-looking bait. Check out that profile. As you can imagine, this thing, um, I said I haven't fished with this. I haven't fished with it. I've casted it before. It definitely digs a little bit deeper than your standard rattle trap. It's heavier, by the way. I know it's half ounce, but it feels probably like three quarters. It's got some ballast weights and some BBs in the back. And there it is in sort of a Tennessee shad pattern. And canary. Let's listen to this thing. So that's got sort of a low pitch and a high pitch at the same time. I like that. Ooh, Strike King Diamond Rattler. I was really into the Strike King Diamond patterns, both their spinner baits and they also had some of these, which are the uh, rattle trap versions uh, of the same deal. I'll show you it on the copper. You can see it a little bit better. But it's got this really cool diamond pattern. Look at that. Very similar to a rattle trap profile. It's got the dorsal fin. That eye, look how far to the front of the bait that eye is. That's pretty wild. So there we are on the chartreuse. And a nice deep Texas red. I've actually already swapped out the hooks on this one. I plan on throwing this bait real soon. It's got a good rattle too, doesn't it? Okay, some more rattle spots. Here is that jointed rattle spot I was talking about. It's got the tail there that sort of flips around. The rattle spots tend to have a, a higher pitch rattle, I'm noticing, as I'm kind of rattling all these side by side. And here is a rattle spot uh, minnow, if I can get it out, in a nice matte fire tiger pattern. That's definitely a higher pitch rattle, isn't it? I do have a couple of those Jimmy Houston signature spots out of the package, if I can get them out of the box. Jimmy's signature on one side. By the way, what a nasty color, huh? Super spot on the other. I love that color pattern. Oh. And here are some neon spots. 
This is out of the package, so you can really, hopefully, appreciate that. It's called G-Film. It's basically an insert they use on the inside of a clear plastic body. And when it catches the light just right, it's got a really cool sheen to it. These look awesome underwater, by the way. Ooh, here we go. Okay, so we're talking about the old Racket Shad from Rebel. Man, this is a cool bait. Um, I just lost one of these like this week, so I'm still a little bit heartbroken about that. But if you look at the, the profile, nothing too crazy. Looks like a standard, you know, lipless crankbait. But check this out. Look how fat that belly is. Um, I've actually got some Lucky Craft LVRs that I left in the boat too long and the belly kind of blew up on them. That's almost what this looks like. But it's got a really um, big belly here and I think that's where all the, the rattles are. And the tail is super thin. Now the result of this, I don't know if they did it for sound purposes, but to me, the action of this bait is much more dramatic. Just like with crankbaits, when you have a fatter crankbait, it's got that wider wobble to it. This thing actually has a much wider sort of roll to it than other lipless crankbaits. And we'll give it a, a little rattle here. That's got a good sound too, doesn't it? Ah, let's get me pumped. Here's one offering from Burke. I don't know what this is called. If I can read it through my glasses on. Mm, I don't know. It's a, uh, I've got an old Burke catalog and I have to dig out pretty soon, but this is a Burke lipless crankbait. It is not only silent, but bendy. This is one of the line of soft baits they had out. And check that, <laughs> isn't that wild? There's another one here called, um, what is it? Uh, another one from Burke as well. This one looks more like a head and sonar. It has got a soft shell on it, but it's got a metal uh, skeleton, so it doesn't bend. But isn't that a wild looking bait? Look at that. There's the, the front view of this thing. I don't know what this is called either. I probably should research that. <sighs> okay, last row. One bait that, I don't know when this thing came out. This is pretty wild. This is very similar, as you'll see, to the Bayou Boogie Pico Perch style. This is from South Bend. It's called the Optic. And I've never fished these. I found these online and was like, kind of went nuts. But check it out. It is a Bayou Boogie profile. It's got a red lip. And that lip, you can't see it, but it's actually its own piece of molded plastic. And it's called Optic because look at that wildness. Does it rattle? No, it's silent too, okay. So there's orange. Red. How cool are these, huh? Oh, check this thing out. This one, this green, man. I think that's gold and silver. So you notice I've got like one of each color, so I'm gonna have to be real careful. These are really hard to find. I don't know how I, I found five of them all from the same person, but that might be my next time I go to Louisiana, if I'm fishing around like some not too snaggy stuff, I might be throwing that. I showed you that bomber pinfish in the package. Here's a bomber pinfish out of the package. Definitely has more of that saltwater um, get her done profile. Does it rattle? Little one knocker style, huh? So this is a pretty cool one. This is the smaller pinfish, as is that guy. Oh, more from Burke. So. I do know the name of this one. This one's called the Crankster. And this is a lipless crankbait from Burke. Doesn't rattle. And this one also, ow! This one also bends. 
Crankster came out with a couple of different uh, pretty cool natural patterns as well. Here's one, almost looks like a crappie of some sort. And I don't know what this one is. This is sort of like a little brown minnow bass maybe. I mentioned the suspending uh, spot. This is another discontinued bait from Bill Lewis. This is called the Red Zone. And this is the half ounce profile, but there's no way this thing weighs half an ounce. But it is a suspending rattle trap. Almost sounds more like a spot though, doesn't it? These are really cool baits for cold water because you can kind of crank them and pause them. Instead of sinking immediately, they sort of just hang there and suspend. And here's a couple of classic rattle traps to round out the collection. This color, I love this thing. This is one of my favorite saltwater rattle traps. The whole thing, it's like a clear green plastic with a reflective insert. I only have like a handful of these, but I throw this thing a ton for stripers. And speaking of Louisiana, the old tiger bait, LSU style. <laughs> I don't know if this thing will catch a fish, but in Alexandria, it may. As you can see, so many cranks, so little time. Drop a comment down below. Uh, let me know which of the baits you saw featured today you would most like me to fish with in the upcoming months. Thanks for hanging with me, Bass and Buds. Until next time, keep those traps rattling. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass. Mm-hmm.